Hi friends, India is no more the biggest arm importer of the world. This was published in Times of India and Hindustan Times on 10th of March 2019 and this prompted me to make the video for you people. There's a lot to say so I begin now. This is one of the cuttings in Times of India and it says India slips to number 2 in list of arms importer. Now Saudi Arabia is the biggest arm importer. India has slipped to second with 9.5% followed by Egypt, Australia, Algeria and China. As of now, Russia is supplying 58% of the arms to India, followed by Israel at 15% and US at 12%. Now, why we have broached this discussion? This article in newspaper and the recent Pulwama attack, we all know, followed by Indian bombings of Palakot, has raised many questions. So, the point is, what is India's preparedness? Is there going to be a war? If yes, how long is going to last? How much is it going to cost? And whenever we broach or start a war, there are many reasons, many questions than answers. And more than weapons, we need a very strong economy to back the war. So what is the edge in terms of economy and defense that India enjoys? How much to rely on foreign countries in terms of defense support, economic relations and diplomatic ties? So a war is always one in so many ways not only it is won by war weapons it is also won by the kind of sub diplomatic support foreign support we have the economic prosperity we enjoy and how much capability we have of our own instead of depending on others we all know that other than defense preparedness, it is equally important to have economic might. This I already discussed. Rich developed countries have more say and that is the reason of clash between China and America. We all have witnessed and we daily see it in our newspaper and TV news channel. So my point of mentioning China and America in this discussion is there's no doubt on daily basis we are having a war with Pakistan but we are surrounded by so many neighbors we want to have friendly relationship with all our neighbors including Pakistan but we cannot compromise our sovereignty, our peace of mind and world must understand especially Pakistan that pa China, uh, that Kashmir is the part of India which they are <coughs> not coming to the reality China is supporting Pakistan and we know why
we already have one war with China. We do not want one more. We do not want. But then it is wisely said, if you want peace, be prepared for war. With respect to China, we must have strong economy because China is now a very strong economic power. So we need to match this. We need to come at power with China in this aspect. Moving further, the question of this whole discussion need to be judged in geopolitical and economic interest in the region. That's the reason I'm not only talking about China, Pakistan, I'm also talking about America. America is also having some vested interest in this region, we all know. It is important for India to develop cutting edge technologies at home, not only to make its own weapons, but also to make the country self-reliant and prosperous. We need weapons to defend ourselves. We need to be self-reliant because we do not want to depend on others in terms of technology and we definitely need to be prosperous and we need to be economically rich not only at par with China maybe more that what we desire now this I already discussed in my earlier slides now Saudi Arabia is one of the world biggest arm importer this is actually mentioned by Stockholm International Peace Research Institute popularly called SIPRI SIPRI report and the Times of India and other times have made this article from this article of Stockholm International Peace Research Institute now how India is becoming self-lined in weapons India has remained a top importer of weapons for over a decade now. Now with DRDO popularly called Defense Choice Development Organization, HAL Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, BEL Bharat Aeronautics Limited, ISRO Indian Space Research Organization and many other scientific institutes have developed good technologies and this has helped the country in defense as well as to make the country prosperous and self reliant we all know and the world knows it that the development of cryogenic engi engines by ISRO is a glaring example of our technology might. China has a lot of fear from India from its long range missiles. We all know Brahmos and other missiles. Now the draft defense production policy of 2018 not only envisages production at home but also exports of defense item. So the draft defense pulse production policy not only want to see India as self-reliant in its production of weapons but we can also export the same to our friendly countries so that we can help them as well as earn money. India is also looking forward to foreign def direct investment in defense, research and development, involving startups and increasing jobs at the same time. So this will provide jobs to our professionals like those from aviation engineering and electronics. If we look at, look at our trade deficit 
we are now importing a lot of electronics items from china imports from china have increased over the last five years and they have increased by almost five times and much of it is electronics items and machinery so why not encourage our own engineers and electronics engineers so that we can develop the same at a home India realizes that it is weak in chip manufacturing and electronics hardware. It is making strong efforts to fill up this gap. If Indian engineers can make cryogenic engines, they can as well overcome those technological hurdles. So, if we can develop cryogenic engines, we can easily develop other technologies. Indian arm imports have decreased. This is what the article is all about. And Made in India slogan given by the present NDA government has helped to some extent, though if not to a larger extent, but it shows the intent of the government. We have saved a lot on our foreign exchange. More jobs in India have been created by DRDO, HL, BL, BHL using, using the talent in homegrown giants in private sector like LNT, Bharat Forge, Tata, Mahindra and Mahindra, Reliance Defense, Adani Group. This I have taken from Economic Times published on 11th July 2018 where it was written that private sectors like Alenti, Bharat, Tata, Mahindra and Mahindra and help the Indian defense industry. There is a strategic advantage in this. If we produce weapon at home, it prevents choking of supply at vulnerable times. Suppose we are at war and now we need defense equipment. A sudden surge or we need spare parts no one can blackmail us or stop the supply at the same time even if we do not have war and we do not want war actually this helps in creating the Indian might Indian defense exports to friendly countries of have increased over the time and we can and we are contributing and we will contribute to our friendly countries and have a win-win situation. Development of technology helps not only in defense but also gives boost to the general economic development of the country. So the technology that we develop is not only used in defense but is also used to peaceful manner like for example the nuclear technology we all know we can have nuclear weapons and with the same nuclear energy we can produce power as well so it depends how we use the technology so India wants to develop technology which is not only useful in defense but more and more we want to use the same technology for our economic development, increase jobs and increase our Indian might. HL is expected to not only develop strategic defense aircrafts, helicopters, fighter planes, but also trainer jets, small passenger aircrafts and even bigger like Boeing or Airbus in the next decade. As we all know, Indian aviation industry is among the top five in the world why we should import Boeing from America and Airbus from France our country is so diverse so big in geography we need small passenger aircrafts first we will develop them and in time to come we can even develop bigger aircrafts like Boeing and Airbus why can't we do that we can 
as already discussed now russia still enjoys the largest supplier to india and i would like to end the article by one of the famous statements found in latin book given by publius flavius vegetus renders it is if you want peace prepare for war and countrymen it is important to be always prepared for war if you want to have peace of mind that's it thank you